Hey everybody! We thought we'd hop in here quick because we're just getting ready. Mini is about to start. America the Beautiful is on. But we've had a couple of uh, sponsors who bought us some drinks and yes. we wanted to get them in now. So as we are preparing for the start of WrestleMania, we need to thank a sponsor for with a What's on Tap. So Hell yeah! Big thanks go out to Eric M. Thank you for a round. And uh, Lane with the second part of the What's on Tap from... Well, part one. So, thanks to both of you for bringing us a What's on Tap, and uh, Eric especially for this What's on Tap. So, without further ado, show us what you have on tap, because we also have appetizers. Yeah, so I, I won't go too far into it, because Kidder's had it on the show, but he uh, saved me one of these Zing Zang Bloody Marys, so I'm looking forward to trying that. And of course, because last night, as we mentioned, part one of uh, the first match on WrestleMania, well, uh, Mike's Heart Lemonade, so they're not sponsoring us, but Eric and Lane are. So thank you for bringing us the Mike's Hard Lemonade uh, Black Perry Pear Seasonal Pick. Is this thing out of date, too? I should find it. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> But America the Beautiful, Triple B the Beautiful, if you would like to buy us a beer or sponsor the show, go to BeerBluesBS.com. Again, BeerBluesBS.com, and you can click on Buy Us a Beer. The pyro's going off. It's time to get it on for WrestleMania. Woo! It's time to play the show. The bell has rung, and that big show might be over. But it's time for us to bring wrestling information you can enjoy with the match predictions, analysis, the ups and downs of professional wrestling, all reaction, some beverage drinking to bring you logic on tap with your good brothers. It's time for you to look into the eyes of Howard Blues and the Mark Kidder on Beer, Blues, and BS. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another special wrestling episode of Beer, Blues, and BS, the podcast that's shorter than a WWE video package. I'm your host, Howard Blues, here, as always, with my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, the Mark Kidder. Kidder, how are you doing tonight? Man, you know, I, I feel like I'm hungover. You know why? <laughs> because it's two nights of stupendously long and late video excitement drain. Just I'm sad it's over, but you know what? I'm happy it's over. And uh, the reasoning, of course, because we talked about it in part one. So join us for part one. You can see it on YouTube or listen on Podbean and all your audio sources. But of course, why a, a two hour pre show and why start at seven when they make it four hours long? Yeah. Why? So that's why we are here again. And it's uh, both of our bedtime because, you know, day jobs and that sort of thing. <clears throat> so if you want to sponsor the show and then uh, help us not have to go to work Monday through Friday at an early hour and like do this and have some more fun. You can go to beerbluesbs.com and sponsor the show. It'll take a bit, but we appreciate everything. And uh, what's on tap? Well, we might as well just get right into it, huh? Yeah. It's a what's on tap twofer this evening. Yes, we have two what's on taps. You'll see later that, uh, or earlier, earlier, earlier. Okay, earlier. so so They've this is seen the first one. This is number two of the what's on tap. Uh, appreciate you conferring with future Howard on the placement of the what's on tap because in uh, the timeline, the space time continuum, it happened earlier, and now we're here, but later it happens, and so yes, this one uh, brought to you by Lane. Brought to us by Lane. Physically brought to us. And this one, he said, we needed to be together to drink it. So what better than WrestleMania Sunday? Mm -hmm. So first of all, before I put my glass down, uh, cheers to you in the Metallica glasses. And uh, 
<clears throat> just wanted to handle this properly here because this here is a, a swanky bottle, I do have to say, for, for a beverage. Uh, and this is a beer uh, from the Goose Island Barrel House, I think. Yes. Uh, this one develops in the bottle up to five years. Ooh. So had we waited, it would have been thicker. But uh, this is the Bourbon County brand stout from the uh, Goose Island Brewing Company. The one pint, apparently, but these pint glasses, it almost filled up two of them. So I think they're lying on the packaging. Uh, notes of vanilla, toffee, chocolate, burnt sugar, and dried fruit. Again, it is oh one, one pint and 0.9 fluid ounces. So... I guess if I continued to read, you know, that that probably would have helped. Uh, this one is a 14% per volume alcohol. <laughs> uh, and it says to drink by July 26th of 2026. So we're safe. Enjoy in a sniffer. Uh, make sure you sniff that a couple times. And this is the 21 reserve uh, on here in the Imperial Stout. So... We'll, we'll bring this in just for a quick classy look on the bottle here because, well, it's, it's pretty classy. And with this, I'm going to turn this over to the local geek because it's a pry top and he can bottle some tasty beer in it. So, Lane, thanks for bringing us the beverage. Appreciate it. And uh, again, cheers. Did you have a did you have a sample of this? Not oh, yet. No. Not okay. Yet. You can smell the toffee and the vanilla uh, when you when you first smell it. It's a thick beer, not as thick as some of the other stuff that I've had. Yeah. But very smooth. You get the the toffee right there. Kind of hangs around a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, you can taste the chocolate mm -hmm. too with it. So, which I'm not a big chocolate fan. So, yeah, it's not a not one up your alley. Not no. a note I'm enjoying, but uh, you know, at least they made it prevalent. Yeah, I mean, you do hate when you you get a beer with a tasting note, and you're like. I don't taste it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So at least I can taste that. But I would much rather taste like the vanilla, the caramel, the mm -hmm. sugar. I, yeah, chocolate. Yeah. It's not one of my. It's strong. very chocolatey. I'm I'm mostly getting that now. Yeah, but that's okay. What are you gonna get? You're gonna get some interesting reviews of this here thing that uh, they called WrestleMania Part Two, the most stupendous WrestleMania ever. So. Do you want to do a quick overview? You just want to hit it hard. Boom. First match. Let's go. Uh, let's just go right into the Let's first attack match. it. Okay. Yep. The first match on the card this evening was a triple threat tag team match for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championships. This featured the current tag team champions of RK Bro. Uh, hey, Randy. Just got to throw that out there. Uh, of course, that's Randy Orton and Riddle. And then the Street Profits, Angela Dawkins, Montez Ford, and Alpha Academy. Sheesh! And, of course, we'll get to after the match there about that. And uh, Otis. Now, this one, I thought it was a good opening match. Straight up, I chose RK Bro. Same. And you chose RK Bro. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of, uh, I feel anyway, and I'm sure that you agree, they have a lot of steam heading into WrestleMania. The, the crowd's still behind them, really interested in watching them. And I mean, I, I've enjoyed watching them and their interaction. Yeah, they're a, a great example of, you know, kind of opposites attracting and, and the way they play off of each other is great and, mm -hmm. and such. So, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think it's a great... Mm -hmm. It's a great team for, for right now. And then when they when they came down to the to the ring, 
Of course, WWE has the augmented reality with the 3D figures and shapes and lasers and things. And of course, Randy Orton's snake has been a, a big thing where it comes out, tries to grab you, bite you, whatever. <laughs> and they added in the riddle snake <laughs> with a little hat. <laughs> and uh, it, it was like pissing off the Randy Orton snake. So it was trying to go after the riddle snake and it kept missing <laughs> and dodging. I, it, it still tickles me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good point of, of the match. And it kind of set the tone, I feel, for the match as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, overall, I thought this was one of the better matches um, mm-hmm. on tonight. And yes. I, I mean, a lot of really good spots, a lot of good energy to it, you know, which will be kind of a running theme as we go down this kind of energy levels with some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But I overall, I liked this match. It was mm-hmm. a great opener. And and it wasn't terribly long for the amount of spots that they performed, including the double vintage, which is your favorite move of Randy Orton's, of yeah. course. Uh, but uh, 11 minutes, 30 seconds was the length of this. It didn't feel like that for me, which was nice. And uh, by the end of it, RK Brew picks up the W and remains your Raw Tag Team Champions. So that was that was very nice. I enjoyed that. After the match, again, they had a big shout out to Gable Stevenson. Stevenson, there's no N in it, so whatever Stevenson. Uh, to come into the ring and celebrate because the classy move of the Street Profits coming in to fist bump and bring the smoke, celebrate a little bit. They were going to drink. And, of course, uh, <clears throat> Chad Gable, not a fan. Shoosh! And that's where that shoosh came in there. <laughs> he brought the microphone. They had a pretty close up on pretty, pretty, pretty close shot of him. And when he shooshed, you could see the saliva shoot like 30 feet. <laughs> kind of gross. But basically, they uh, had uh, Gable Stevenson come into the ring to face Chad Gable. And uh, Gable threw Gable <laughs> over into the corner. And Gable celebrated and Gable left. <clears throat> and then Gable went over to the rest of the, the dudes and then brought the smoke. And then they went to a commercial and commercial, Mm -hmm. which again, with the commercials and the video recaps from the night before it, it drug out the, the, the entire show, just like last night with the video promos rehashing the stuff from last night, you know, maybe a 30 second spot, spot, spot winner done. But this was like a three minute video package rehash of last night in addition to the commercials as we went through the show yeah and and to speak on that as it go the show goes on i mean they they keep throwing in you know back to last night Mm -hmm. but it's not like they ever showed like a true like full moment it's like the things they chose to highlight were interesting like Mm -hmm. they chose to highlight bianca belair's entrance Mm -hmm. yeah which yeah, for a moment, mm-hmm. you know, that wasn't, yeah, would it, would it be one of the things I would have said was the defining uh moment. Uh, one thing we should throw in that happened at the beginning of tonight's show was Triple mm-hmm. H actually started off the show, he came yeah. out, um, and basically welcomed everybody to WrestleMania, mm-hmm. said thank you, and then left, uh, and left his boots in the ring, basically signifying that he was retired. retired. So that did happen, yeah, uh, at the beginning. Too. So just it's a throw. big, big moment that thanks for not letting us forget about it. <laughs> right. But like that, that's a moment. Bianca yeah. Belair entering. Yeah. And then cutting to her holding the belt at the end. I don't think they even did that. No, it mm. was like they, they just showed they her just... entrance and then they're like, okay, done. And it's like they did the same with Cody Rhodes. Yeah. You know, they showed that was one of the from last night. Yeah. It was the Cody Rhodes entrance. <clears throat> and that was it. it. That was it. So the things they chose to highlight with that was just kind of all weird. It's all over the place. Well, not even all over the place because they did 
the same for all the moments, but they weren't that, you know, highlight reel that you would drag you into seeing some of the match without giving you the result. Yeah. So next match on the card. This one came out of nowhere. Uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, Bobby Lashley and Omas. I did not care about this match. Yeah. The, they're, you know, Bobby Lashley became healthy again. So then he could return. Great for him. Omas. I have no interest in him at all. I, I didn't have any interest with him with AJ Styles. I, I felt AJ Styles carried him through the whole thing. I get that he's learning and training and they got they want to build him up. And yes, he he was better than say great Kali as wrestling or doing some moves and he can actually talk. However, not a fan. Not a fan. So I picked uh Bobby Lashley in this match. I picked Omos just to be contradictory. I had no real reason because this is, again, this is kind of two guys who've both been pushed as of recently, who's, whose push is going to move on. I think it's clearly with the results we see, they're they're heading in the Bobby Lashley direction. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's not a lot to say about this match overall. It, yeah, it was the how can I beat the bigger guy that is the mountain – and how can I continue to stay upright and not get tossed around by a rag doll? So break them down, spear them from every direction, and then try and take them out. So Lashley picks up the victory in this one in six minutes, 35 seconds. So overall, <clears throat> yeah, it was there. Yeah. There was some energy. It was a good quick pee break match. Mm -hmm. If you needed to do that, you know, 15 minutes into the yeah, show. Yeah. So next one, uh, this one being your celebrity match of the night, Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn. I chose Johnny Knoxville and you went with Knoxville as well, just mm -hmm. because it's, it's the celebrity. It's yeah. hard to beat the celebrity. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think. In my head, this was the match of the night. I, I would I would go that far. And uh, the reasoning for that, it was high energy. Mm -hmm. It was kind of screwball because yep. it was a no holds bar. Sorry, anything goes match. Yeah. Interchangeable. Uh, there were some unique props used. And the jackass guys were also involved in the match. So it could be kind of the screwy finish because they were involved, but I feel it was expected. Yeah. So it's not really a screwy finish to me. No, no. I, I mean, in a in a no DQ situation like that, man, yeah, that doesn't really mean for a, a screwy finish. Um, I would agree with you. I actually, out of all of the matches, this is probably the one I enjoyed the most. And mm. it was... The comedic match. It, I think part of it was it was the only comedic match. Yeah, you know, on the card, it was done very well. It had mm -hmm. some unique spots. Uh, the involvement of the Jackass crew allowed them to create and do stuff that never seen before, and mm -hmm. was okay with that. Yeah, you know, it. But it was it was high energy and it was fun and it was it was a blast. Um, it actually, uh, Kidder is the second longest match of the night. No, oh. but it didn't feel that way. Yeah, you know it it felt like it was perfectly timed out. Like it 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 didn't stay too long. Yeah, you know the gimmick wise, like it it just it was very well done. It told a story. It. Yeah, I really enjoyed that match, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. The interesting thing I was just thinking about is if if another wrestler was in there, comedic wrestler even, right? And uh, they had the stupid props, right? I think we both would have been like, "That's really dumb." <laughs> but but Johnny Knoxville, like, oh, of course, they create this stuff because they like beating the crap out of each other. So this is hilarious because now they're doing it to Sami Zayn. 
<clears throat> like the uh, all the mi- mouse traps, mice traps, on a table that they pulled out from under the ring. The stand-up, uh, I-, I don't know, fulcrum where the bottom part is set up to look like a leg and a foot, so then they can do the low blow with the machine. Uh, or the giant mouse trap that they pulled out and how Johnny Knoxville ended up picking up the victory at the end of the match, getting Sami Zayn stuck into the mouse trap. Uh, but obviously, you know, the winner, Johnny Knoxville there, we both pick up a point with that, but I don't want to forget to mention the biggest little pump handle slam ever <laughs> with the uh, wee man coming in there and doing the giant slam on Sami Zayn. Um, I don't know, you know, we man's history, but uh, the fact that he could come in there and then do that way to go. Maybe he's taking some pointers from uh, our, our old friends. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. With the Shalili. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was, it was uh, it was good. There was also a giant hand that uh, oh, yeah. came out and smacked uh, Sami Zayn at one point. Forgot about that. It was like on the side of the ring, and he was running around the ring, and it came out. Wow! <laughs> I mean, so it had some good. I, I will say, like the mouse traps on the table, while interesting yeah. and had a bit of like ooh, if you actually looked at them, they none of them were set. None of them were set. So yeah, eh, yeah. like like that call was... shenanigans there. Uh, yeah, I, I would call shenanigans there, but I did like the ending with the giant mouse trap. That yeah. was it was a nice callback to earlier in the match. <laughs> it's a nice callback. It's called storytelling, right? Interesting. So that was good, and a good promotion for uh, Sammy there and uh, the new the crew for the Jackass Forever movie. Uh, again, that was uh, fourteen minutes twenty five seconds. If we forgot to tell you the length on that one, so. Mm-hmm. Next up, your baño break for the evening. In case you needed to go to the bathroom for 10 minutes, 50 seconds. It was a great time to do so. I mean, this had, I don't want to say it had a lot of potential, but it had some potential. But being this as a fatal (coughs) four-way... Tag team match for the uh, WWE Women's Tag Team titles. This goes back to just the same as the triple threat, right? Everybody can be in the ring at once. It's not a traditional tag match or even a tornado tag match, but they treat it as such, and it bothers me (laughs) because you're all legal, essentially. Yeah. You can all go in, you can all do whatever. It's the tag teams and the tag teams, so go make it an interesting match. Uh, the one spot that both of us uh, were like, oh, no, this is not going to go well, was uh, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan having <laughs> the other three members from each of the teams, respectively, on the opposite co- turnbuckles, and then do the huge... Uh, what fall away slam uh, yeah. from the turnbuckle, and both of us went. Uh, somebody's gonna get hurt. <laughs> this doesn't look good. Uh, I mean, it it looked like it turned out okay. I don't know if anybody was injured, but yeah, just ugh. just the odds of them crossing far enough into the ring that somebody lands on somebody unexpectedly, not mm. protecting the way they fall. Yeah, it it looked um not. Good. Uh, this match, I chose the team of Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. I chose Sasha Banks and Naomi. Uh, sure. For no real reason. And of course, you see the push from Sasha Banks has been kind of hanging out in the background since she lost at WrestleMania last year. Comes and goes a little bit here, a little bit there, whatever. And you're like, oh, Sasha Banks is still here. She's still employed. Yeah. And Naomi. And so, random tag team, but I suppose they're trying to bring a little bit more legitimacy because it was kind of a joke run with Zelina and Carmella. Well, and actually, not just a random tag team. These guys actually have history together. If you go from NXT, yeah. No, not even NXT. When they brought up 
um, Sasha and Charlotte and Becky and kind of all these guys up to the main roster. They formed those those horrendous teams. Uh, you know, there was like three or four of them that were like three person teams. Mm. And there was Team Bad, which featured Naomi and Sasha Banks. So they're mm. actually teammates from way back in the day. So it mm. actually makes some sense <clears throat> in that regard. Sure. They've been together before for a while. Right. So so they have some history mm-hmm. and such. I will say my thing on this match, Kidder, is I don't know why it needed to be a fatal four way, except you wanted to get more people in. I think this would have been better served just as a straight up tag match. Mm-hmm. And I the match shined when it was Sasha, Naomi, Zelina, and Carmella. Mm-hmm. When you added anybody else in, it was just kind of like, eh, it like it just wasn't working. It's like they were trying to hurry up to do something, but then didn't know what to do. I almost like it's kind of like the, some of the Rumble matches when you get too many people in there. There's too many people trying to do too many things at once, and then you can't have your featured spot. Yeah, it was it was kind of a little bit of that. I just think that there just was not the effort from the other teams because I think they knew they weren't winning it. Yeah. So it just, it, it didn't feel like those other teams were really trying in the same sure. way. Like they just weren't bringing the other. Team. Sure. How, how would you rather feel if, for instance, WWE would do a tag tournament? If they had enough people, you go through the tournament and you obviously are vying for that spot at WrestleMania against the the tag title holders at the time. You know, you know, what I would say is I would rather see some of these matches that they have put in here for the sake of getting everybody in, like the Bobby Lashley Omos, like the massive things like this. I wish they would go back to what they were doing, which was the Andre the mm-hmm. Giant, yeah, the Battle, Battle Royal. Royal. Yeah, yeah. Because that was a great match to have at the beginning, and it brought like it, it, everybody got at least to be in, mm-hmm. and you got to wrestle at WrestleMania, even if it was just in the Battle Royal. I liked that. Yeah. And I would rather take that than some of these matches that just get added for seemingly no reason and are just kind mm-hmm. of filling the space. And again, going back to the have this on the pre-show. Yes. Put it on like the hour one and hour two pre-show because it's two hour pre-show. You sit and it's it's worse than us talking about it because I mean we're talking about this as as fans, not employees. So, yeah. eh, whatever. Uh, the winner of that match ended up being Howard's pick. Of Natalia or not Natalia. Sasha and Banks. It was Sasha Naomi. Banks and Naomi. The other the other N and S <laughs> in the match. <Yep. clears throat> and then I think there was another commercial and a video package there again, highlighting the night before. Eh. Uh next match, Edge and AJ Styles. I picked Edge. I believe you I also, also had Edge. Pick, picked Edge. And I was looking forward to this with Edge. Turning darker, he's like brooding, getting a little weirder, bringing up some storylines maybe that he didn't resolve way back when. And so I was uh, looking forward to this. I mean, AJ Styles also puts on a hell of a match. Yeah. So. Yeah, this should have been this should have been a classic. Mm-hmm. It should have been. And they gave these guys lots of time. Oh, yeah, the uh, last one was 10 minutes, 50 seconds. I don't know if we said that yeah, for we, the women's match, but yeah, there it is. So, yeah, this one being double that. Yeah. They, longest match of the night. Yeah, and you know what? Boy, did it feel that way. These mm-hmm. guys started off really good. They had a nice intensity. They had a nice clip. And then it just slowed down, and it was mm-hmm. move, move. Okay, we're both going to let him recover. Mm. They're going to show a wide shot of the arena for a little Mm. bit. Do a move. Cut to a wide shot. Do a move. Cut to the wide shot. And I don't know. You know, This is just me uh, spitballing a little bit here. But maybe uh, as uh, AJ Styles was entering the arena, of course, the picture of the arena, uh, the set has the bottom of the star 
right where you walk out. And apparently, <clears throat> from uh, where I saw on the internet, so it of course has to be true, that somebody there who was at the event watching this saw AJ Styles do, of course, the, the hair whip back. And when he whipped it, his hair back, he apparently smashed... I mean, we know he smashed his, his head uh, against something, but apparently it was the set. And when they, after the pyro goes off and the smoke and everything, AJ starts walking a little bit closer to the arena, they cut to him and, and he's just gushing blood out of the side of his head. And we're like, what the hell happened there? Like, what the hell, dude? And then he made it to the ring and he looked pissed and he was still bleeding and everything and he's wiping it with his gloves. And so maybe that was a little bit of a factor where maybe he concussed himself. I don't know. Yeah. But I, this this was just dragging dragging on. Yeah. Longer and longer. Yeah, it it went way too long um and would eventually end with uh Damian Priest showing up ringside. Yeah, and not really doing much, just showing up. But just stared at AJ Styles. Yeah, AJ goes for the phenomenal forearm, gets speared in the process. And one, two, three. Edge takes the win at 24 minutes and five seconds. Mm -hmm. But and then you had kind of this <clears throat> Damian Priest Edge interaction afterwards mm -hmm. that basically a start of a team. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, 24 minutes, five seconds. Ugh, I mean, I, I was really hoping that this would have been more, but there just wasn't enough there to keep me completely entertained. I mean, I got up and I was doing stuff in the kitchen with the snacks or moving stuff like, oh, they're, yep, okay, move some stuff and whatever, you know. It, it wasn't something where I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> really excited. So uh, I think there was another video package and then, the next match was a tag team match that uh, also had some potential. But this one, I don't know if it was screwy per se. I mean, it was, but it wasn't, right? Yeah. So uh, it's a Sheamus and Ridge Holland with uh, Pete Dunn, i.e. Butch, and uh, New Day with Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston. They made this big package essentially about Biggie, of course, who broke his neck uh, from a, a move from Ridge Holland, uh, which is still watching the footage. You go, Ugh. but uh, they, they talk about specifically that uh, Xavier and Kofi are wearing ring gear that mimics Big E's. It has quotes from Big E all across, uh, you know, front and the back side, all over it. Yeah, the coats have it. The uh, you know, on and on and on. Like they're just railing the fact of Kofi and Xavier miss Big E, and what are they going to do without him? But they're fighting for his memory. And normally in WWE terms, that's hey, these guys are going to win. <laughs> so before that, I had picked the New Day. To win, uh, just because. Yeah, I picked the new day as well. Uh, Xavier just returned from an uh, Achilles injury, and of course, Sheamus and Ridge Holland have been there and brawling, and they just brought in Pete Dunn a month and a half ago. So it's kind of an up in the air match, you know. This this one was not long at all. No, a minute forty seconds. I mean, at least it wasn't a squash match, as in 20 seconds, but they kind of did the New Day dirty on this one with Sheamus and Ridge Holland picking up the victory and then Pete Dunne going to town trying to beat the crap out of the New Day after the bell had, had run, rung, and he was running after him during the match. So it was kind of screwy, but not. And that's why I kind of went into it that way. Yeah. <clears throat> nah. It was there. Uh, another video package mm -hmm. and uh, having to listen to <laughs> Byron Saxton 
course, before this, because Michael Cole, Byron Saxton on the desk, because Pat McAfee in his WrestleMania debut. Uh, this one, not only uh, Austin Theory, his uh, opponent with this one, and Vince McMahon accompanying him to the ring. I picked Pat McAfee. Same. Uh, the entrance at Pat Head, very nice. The NFL Dallas cheerleaders uh, <laughs> accompanying him. Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes playing. I don't know if that uh, plays back to anything from McAfee's history, whether it's his like entrance music when he was a, a punter or for his show, whatever the case is. I enjoy that song. So the fact that WWE paid for the rights to use that at WrestleMania, good on them, <clears throat> came out. And uh, I thought this was in the top three matches of the night. Yeah, this was another great match. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, he, he showed, Pat McAfee showed some, some really great athletic talent skills. I mean, and he is an athletic guy. I mean, he's a former punter for the Indianapolis Colts. It, you know, and after he retired from football, he did go into training uh, to be a wrestler. So mm -hmm. it's not like he's he's new to this. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, still, when you watch, uh, there's one part where he's up on the ropes with Theory kind of going for the suplex. Theory pushes him. Pat McAfee does a backflip, lands it, runs back, jumps, and gets right back up on the top, you know, rope. To the third rope. Yeah, you know, it. <clears throat> I mean, that is some um, impressive, you know, athletics mm -hmm. on display. Uh, but just he has such a nice natural charisma and energy about him that it, it really plays well. Mm -hmm. And it, it played well throughout what he did. Made me respect Pat McAfee more uh, just because of the ability that he showed and how he was actually able to do cool stuff as kind of a celebrity, but not. I mean, yeah, he he works commentary and everything, but Corey Graves hasn't been wrestling for a while, and obviously that's a different issue, but he's been cleared to come back to the ring as well. So, and I never watched any Corey Graves match, so I don't really want to call him out but i never heard anything like you gotta check out this dude Corey graves like he's the best wrestler ever never heard anything like that and pat mcafee seeing the video package of him as a kid and the home videos suplexing or doing power bombs to i don't know his friends or his siblings whatever the case was so good on him to make his wrestlemania dream happen uh austin theory He's all right. Did 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 an all right job to hang in the match, I guess. Uh, a couple spots here and there, and then Pat McAfee picks up the victory. So very excited about that to get the point. After McAfee is celebrating, and uh, Vince McMahon is you know over near Austin Theory giving him the what's over. Uh, Pat McAfee's like, "Hey, McMahon." Bring it. And we're like, nah. McMahon's not going to wrestle. He's like 76 years old. <clears throat> and, of course, at first he starts taking off his jacket, and then the crowd cheers, and he puts it back on. And then they, they boo him because he's going to leave. And then he takes his jacket off and throws it and starts unbuttoning his shirt. Like, oh, okay. And you see the famous black wife beater underneath because that's the McMahon wrestling shirt. And so he came into the ring. They called out a ref. And uh, this one, this was the screwy match of the night. Oh, I don't think so. No? No. You don't think so? There was I think so. I don't think there's anything screwy with this. I think it's a McMahon screw job. Um, no, I don't think so. No, no. Why? Because there's nothing screwy that happened. I mean, yes, Austin Theory interfered a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's not as screwy as what happens in the last match. 
Okay, okay. But, you know, Austin Theory did grab him and pull him into the ring, the corner and the turnbuckle there. And then <clears throat> with the punt to the face with a football from McMahon. Could have been DQs. But, of course, the official doesn't want to DQ him because it's Vince McMahon. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, McMahon ends up winning that one by default. Then, by God, I lost my mind. <laughs> Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Yeah. Steve Austin shows up. Music hits. You hear that glass breaking, and my my uh, brain just went shooting into the stratosphere. <sighs> yeah, he started... Coming down to the ramp, and yes, he's wearing his knee braces. What does that mean? Austin's here to kick some ass. Hmm. So he gave uh, Austin Theory the once over, get got him out of the ring, gave McMahon the once over, and then hey, eh, throw me some beer. All right, so they start having a beer. The uh, sniff of the beer right away from McMahon. <laughs> he uh, gets the beer from Austin and then opens it, and uh, huh, huh, huh. Like licks the foam a couple times. I'm like, what? What? It was good. I enjoyed that. And then, uh, of course, they start drinking it. You know, after the cheers, and as their McMahon is still drinking it, Austin with a stunner out of nowhere, and McMahon takes it like the biggest turd sack. That you have ever seen. McMahon, take one. And your point was, well, he is like 70-something years old. I'm like, I know, but it's, it, it's a McMahon stunner botch. Just <laughs> every time. And then uh, Austin Theory came into the ring. Uh, I think to check on McMahon. I think Austin Theory or, was already... Or, 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 it was, was Austin that Theory, then it was McMahon. Oh, okay. Yes. <sighs> So the nice thing with uh, Austin Theory is he came in to uh, yell at Austin, and Austin gave him a giant stunner. And Austin Theory, I think, was trying to play for the, the biggest stunner sell in the history of wrestling because he flip-flopped and flew <laughs> and then rolled. And it was, it was quite, quite the sell. Mm -hmm. So that was good. And then uh, Austin invited Pat McAfee into the ring, did a little bit of a beer bash. And uh, as they're celebrating drinking some beer, Austin gives him the stunner. Boosh. That was good. And then he rolled out of the ring, did a couple more rounds, grabbing beers and smashing beers and enjoying beers, threw the beer at Pat McAfee. <laughs> and then at about, I don't know, 20 seconds later, they cut back to Pat McAfee <laughs> and he's like half dead, squeezing the beer out of the can into his mouth. That was just, just great. Just a great shot. I enjoyed that. And then uh, McMahon's shoe was in the ring. So Austin picked up the shoe and was like, ha, 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 and then whips the son of a bitch down the ramp. And it would have gone uh, all the way, but it ended up on one of the step platforms on the barricades. And I think some fan got uh, a $400 shoe. Yeah. And then Austin did you know, a couple more, and uh, he was out. Yeah. So, okay, of the three people who took stutters, yes. well, let's rank them. Okay. Who, 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 who did the best? How would you rate it between oh. Austin Theory, McMahon, McAfee? Who did it best? Man. So <clears throat> McMahon did the classic McMahon stunner. So he was on point with his stunner taking. Did I think it was the best? No. I'll put him at number three. <laughs> Pat McAfee, well, uh, I really enjoyed his version of the stunner and the shake because, of course, there's, you know, the uh, electrocution after you get stunnered. Uh, I'll put him at number two and. I'll have to give Austin Theory something for this evening. 
he'll be number one in taking the stunner because he 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 would have cleared the top rope had he been closer to the edge. <laughs> he would have cleared it. Yeah. I, I I would go McAfee first of the theory mm. because I loved the uh, fountain <clears throat> effect that uh, McAfee had as he fell uh, backwards yes. with the beer. Because yes. a lot of times when they do that, it's like they shoot all of it in the big spray. Yeah, and he just kind of fountained it as he That's... fell backwards. It was. It was Almost a, like it was pushing him over. It yeah. was it was great. That was a that was a good point. It was a, a good spot. Um, all of that. Uh, let's see the the Pat McAfee Austin Theory match was nine minutes forty seconds, and then the shenanigans match afterward with Mister McMahon winning was three minutes forty five seconds. And, and to clarify, why I don't think that ends up as screwy fish of the night is because we didn't get a you know a true declaration of what the stipulations were. Mm, so it could have been a no holds barred match or an anything goes or a street fight. Uh, yeah. Right. So that that's the only reason why I can't, right. can't say that because I don't know what was agreed to if All it was right. a straight single match. The logo made it to about here and then it went off the screen because <laughs> it didn't happen. <clears throat> so another video package. I mean, I love the video, the promos to build up to the upcoming match. But they need to go away. Like all of these other videos of rehashing what happened last night. The <clears throat> extra long, like everything. The commercials. The Cricket Wireless commercials all over the place. Like, yes, we get it. That's your sponsor, WrestleMania. How about you sponsor the replay and then your logo gets put up or you pot up, put up a lower third instead of wasting 30 seconds of my time. Yeah. I I mean, there was probably easily 30 minutes of video package tonight, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a bit too much. I don't mind the recap because mm -hmm. as somebody who doesn't watch on a regular <clears throat> basis, yes, at least gives me an idea of the story that's yep. going forward and and all of that, and I can appreciate that. But yeah, as I said, when it's like, hey, highlights ish from the night before, but it's just some guy's mm -hmm. entrance. I yeah. I would much rather you you cut that and we get to the next. <clears throat> match and mm -hmm. then i get to go home at a regular time because it's already midnight and we're yeah. still got one more match to talk about uh-huh uh-huh and i agree i i've always loved the wwe video packages they put together leading up to the match how did we get here well six years ago six months ago last week here we are love it seeing the same thing that i watched last night I can go watch it because I pay for that on the Peacock because this is a premium live event, which we, for the first time, have mentioned this evening, mm -hmm. which you can get your premium T-shirt at BeerBluesBS.com. Let me move that out of the way so you can see the full effect of the premium T-shirt from a premium show as we watch a premium live event at a premium price with premium beer. And premium talent. Hey, hey, you see what that is right there? That's a seal of quality, man. That's a quality seal, too. Yeah. It's not a seal. It's a lion. Right. Or is it? it that's a lion. That's a lion. I hey, hey, didn't want to say it was a tiger. It's a lion on a seal, which makes it a seal. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late, folks, because he's getting into the bad jokes <laughs> and you know, so i did trust future howard to put the rim shot sound effect in there. Uh -huh. I did it myself. Uh -huh. it's less editing for later it's yeah, fine exactly so uh yes here we are with the main event to take a line from mark henry this of course featuring the wwe world heavyweight champion brock lesnar yes representing with the f5 fury baby because I want to go storm chasing too. I just have to throw that out there. I, I really want to. I really miss that. Go storm chasing. And uh, the WWE Universal Champion of the World, Roman Reigns. Now, this was interesting to me because Roman came to the ring first. Not specifically interesting in the fact of like, why did he come first? Because Brock Lesnar likes to come out last. Fine. More so because Roman Reigns is built up to be this big guy, bad guy, whatever. And 
normally that would be the last person to show up at the ring. Whatever, didn't really matter. Both entrances were fine. Of course, Paul Heyman accompanied Roman Reigns to the ring, and the Usos were also there with Roman Reigns. Now, the interesting thing, I think I asked you, I'm like, where'd the Usos go? Because they came to the ring, and they were there, and they were with Paul Heyman. They were next to him. And then... They left to beat traffic. And you're like, well, this match is going to suck. We'll see you later. Uh, then Brock Lesnar came down. The interesting thing, as they were introducing each other, normally Mike Rome or whoever the other announcers would be, introduce him. And, of course, Paul Heyman being there, as Mike Rome starts talking, yeah! <laughs> grabs it. And it does the Paul Heyman introduction of Roman Reigns. And so Mike Rome gets the microphone back and he starts talking to introduce Brock Lesnar. And Brock starts moving and I start laughing right away because I know Brock's going for the microphone. And yeah, <laughs> Mike Rome goes, ah! <laughs> gives him the microphone. And Brock Lesnar introduces himself. Very good. Very good. I laughed. That was probably the best part of the match. Yeah, pretty much was. So then they clear the ring, <clears throat> start it up. Lesnar goes at it, and really the first, I don't know, three minutes of the match is all Lesnar. Yeah. Which yeah. is fine. Mm -hmm. We got to eight suplexes. Yes. I predicted seven. And Howard predicted five. Uh, I went out of the limb on this one. Kind of, not really, even though wanting Lesnar to win, clearly, with the shirt. Uh, I chose Roman Reigns to win this one. I had Brock Lesnar. He was ahead in the points. He, he doesn't care. No, <laughs> so, essentially, I'm like, well... Got to bet against my dude here. So, and to be different because you you told me who you're going to choose. And I'm like, well, I'll just be different because it doesn't really matter. So after the first, you know, three minutes, it was pretty much all Roman Reigns, about 80% of the rest of the match. And the screwy finish that I believe you were mentioning is Roman Reigns grabs Lesnar, throws him across the ring. Brock walks it off, and of course the ref is in the corner, and Lesnar stops himself before he runs over the ref, which is like, oh, sorry. Turns around to Roman Reigns coming in for a spear and blasts both of them, which then the official falls down and is dead until it is tapped to wake up. Can you give me some insight into that, Howard the ref? What... Uh, is it just like referee instincts that uh, you wake up when uh, something important is happening? Well, you know, we, we just figure that we'll tune out for a little bit. You know, use it as an excuse to lay there, take a small nap. Mm. You know. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. We could have used a quick nap in the middle of this. How about we start this at 2 o'clock? As in WrestleMania starts at 2, pre-show starts at noon, and then uh, by 4, we, we take an hour nap and then come back to it at 5. <laughs> oh. anyway. or, or we just start at 2, we just record a show, making up what we think happens, and then just run with See it. See what happens. Yeah. Awesome. Run with it anyway. <laughs> Listen, this is a great review show. That didn't happen. Well, it happened for us. <laughs> We put it on uh, WWE. Let's see. What's the last one that I have? I don't know. 2K18 something. I'd have to go to the big board and look. But there's that. So, uh, yeah, like I like I said, uh, it was pretty much all reigns from the latter half majority of the match. And with that, uh, the ref being knocked out, there's screwy part number one. Screwy part number two is... The belt. Oh, yes, yes. The low blow first. So that's uh, number two. And then while well, Lesnar is going, uh, Paul Heyman gives Roman Reigns the universal title, which he then smashes it across 
Lesnar's face, throws the belt back to Paul Heyman, and then goes, hey, ref, wake up, dude. Huh? Oh, yes, a match. And the three count was pretty much that fast, which I call shenanigans, because that is not a three count. That's a two count. And hence, our draft getting screwy edition of the night. There it is. That match was 12 minutes, 15 seconds. Um, ultimately, I think that went on too long because it was the screwiness that was going to happen anyway. And so, meh. You know, for being considered the biggest pay-per-view event of all time, it, mm-hmm. it lacked a little of the big fight feel that mm-hmm. you kind of wanted with something like this. So, And they even introduced it as the greatest match of all time. No, that or, was that was the... That was, that was before. That was the Orton Edge one. This was yeah. just the biggest. The biggest match of all time. Sorry. There's lots of... WWE promotional matches that aren't the greatest thing, so it's hard to keep them straight. Right. So, overall, your takeaway and <clears throat> the scoring. Yeah, so I mean, again, you guys can see the scoreboard, uh, but it ends, uh, Kidder, with 10 points on the uh, for both nights. I end with 12. Uh, so I am the grand champion of WrestleMania. Parts one and two. What a cliffhanger. <laughs> I, I mean, it, 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 there were times where it got close. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, we had a lot of the same picks, so that doesn't help change the score mm-hmm. a lot. So. Mm-hmm. I'll work on that for next time. Yeah, I see. Because <laughs> payback is next. Is it a backlash? Backlash. backlash. That's right. We used to do payback because you'd be payback for your loss at WrestleMania, but now it's just the WrestleMania backlash. Cool. Again, with the WWE branding, stick to something and leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, overall, I mean, it was an okay <coughs> WrestleMania. There were some good matches, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'm more kind of glad that it's over and we can get back to a regular sleep schedule. Yeah, I'm happy that it's over, but I'm sad that it's over because, you know, I want... I want more. I, I want more out of it. And it just didn't give me everything that I feel I needed out of the WrestleMania. I, I didn't get that big excitement level out of, I want to see all of these matches or most of these matches. I was like, eh, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. It, it was all right. And there were some really good spots. I think night two, as in Sunday, was better than Saturday for the most part. Yeah, I th- I think what you know the the thing about it is is that when you look at like past WrestleMania matches, there were maybe you know oh, ten or twelve right. matches over the course of the seven hour event, and I think that if you were to go through and look at the matches between both nights, you could pick out you know twelve matches and make a, a very good WrestleMania and mm-hmm. drop you know a good chunk of these and mm-hmm. still have a good show. I think the whole two night format allows for a little bit of um, crap to filter in and not yeah not be the best of the best. For this. Orion brought the seal. Would you like to throw the seal? <laughs> the first time you've been here to actually get to see it, you don't just see me tossing things and you're like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> see, how about that for uh, retrieval? I mean, if it was a good retrieval, it'd be in my hand. I wouldn't have to We're working it. on it, you know? <laughs> it We're working on it. See, Dodds will put it in my hand. Yeah. See, like, there, that's yep. just completely out of reach. I have short <laughs> arms, Orion. <laughs> I'll throw it for you, but you got to bring it closer, man. <laughs> there we go, go, gadget arms. Oops. There we go. Ready? All right. Well, I think. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it. got stuck on the wall. Oh, yes. That's something else that'll happen where it'll randomly... uh, Let me see. Okay, so it's over here. Hold on. Before we cut this thing short, I'll show you. So, so again, here's the the little seal. These are the little gummy things that that we have. And... (laughs) Yes, it's on the ceiling right now, and Orion is uh, going to sit here, watch it, and meow and yell at it to come down off the ceiling. So this 
is a better story than some of the WrestleMania <laughs> matches. But overall, we watch it so you don't have to. Yeah. I, I will say we also checked out um, Undertaker's Hall of Fame speech. Yes, the, the rest of it. Yeah, uh, which was, it was all right. It was very motivational speaker-ish. Um, went on a bit too long for my for my liking. It was more on the motivational side versus the talk about the history, thank everyone side. Yeah. The other interesting fact that uh, Noel Foley brought up is the lack of Mick Foley being mentioned within that. Your your thoughts on that at being a Foley guy? You know, it's one of those things where he does only have so much time to to thank mm-hmm. everybody, and I think he he tended to focus more on a couple of people who had passed, and mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> what were big parts of his life, like Yokozuna and Crush. But otherwise, he tended to call out people who were there. Mm-hmm. And so it might just be that he prioritized those who were present versus Foley, who wasn't there. Sure. You know, so. And it's hard to say if Foley was there or wasn't there because we never saw him in the audience or they never pointed him out. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm going <clears> to <throat> guess he wasn't there. And I, I'm going to guess that there was that priority of mm-hmm. folks who were there. Right. So, because I mean, if he had to thank everybody who he had amazing matches with, I mean, we'd still be sitting there. Thirty years, man, right? Yeah. Because even if you count down the WrestleMania, I mean, that's almost it's like twenty-eight matches that he had that were Russell. Well, no, what was he twenty-seven and two, so twenty-nine matches. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Overall, uh, and again, uh, if you want to f- f- listen to more of our Hall of Fame breakdown, look at part one of the bonus videos for WrestleMania. Uh, we just happened to watch the rest of it in two parts again because it was almost an hour of him talking, which he's got a lot to say. Yeah. But we talked about that. So we won't waste any more of your time what we can say is thanks for joining us and thank you for coming down oh thanks i'm ready to go home and go to bed it's bedtime for the both of us yeah and uh this video will be up you know well it's already up because you're watching this but anyway thanks for joining us for beer blues bs bonus coverage of wrestlemania night two the breakdown the analysis and the premium everything because that's what we're all about here at Beer Blues and BS. And Orion is definitely happy that we are getting to the point. Now, uh, Howie Blues is going to see if he can get it down from the ceiling. There it is. Hey, how about that, huh? It's, it's, it's nice to make someone happy, right? <laughs> oh, man, he's excited. Uh, Orion is, that is. As I was with Stone Cold coming out to the ring again. All right. Well, uh, for Howard Blues, thanks again. We'll see you on the next edition of Beer Blues and BS. Thanks again to Lane and to Eric for purchasing uh, the beverages for us to partake in for this WrestleMania bonus coverage and WrestleMania itself. I'm the man, the myth, legend, Mark Kidder, and this is Orion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come say, come say goodbye, Ryan. <laughs> and uh, yeah, beerbluesbs.com, beerbluesbs.com. You know, go, go find your toy. Go find the seal. We'll see you again on uh, the next episode. Make sure your glass is at least half full. There's free beer tomorrow, and of course, we will catch you on down the old dusty Tuscan Highway. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. You have been listening to a UA production of Beer, Blues, and BS. 
If you enjoyed the show, help others find out about it by rating the show or leaving a review at your podcast listening service of choice. Thanks for listening, and may your glass never be empty.